What's up guys, my name is Sydney Covey. I'm a real estate agent here in Texas. I wanted to make this video, just talk about how it is being a realtor. Especially here in Texas, I live close to the uh, Austin, Texas market. I'm here in Temple, Texas. But I've sold houses in Dallas, uh, El Paso, Houston, Corpus, like I said, Central Texas, you name it. Um, I lived in Dallas for a couple years, just moved back in April to Central Texas. And, um, the title of this video, which I haven't decided on yet, will probably be something along the lines of what it's like to actually be a realtor or what it's like dealing with home sellers or, you know, something along those lines. So what is it like uh, working with home sellers, being a listing agent in Texas? I've sold, you know, around a hundred houses. I've listed hundreds of houses. And I think that um, the hardest part is dealing with expectations. Home sellers, uh, especially this day and age, do not have a good grip on um, their own expectations, what they want for a home. Uh, especially, you know, I think Austin, Texas is, is particularly one of those markets that's, I don't know what, I, I would call it emotionally driven. I know there's a lot of jobs there. There's a lot of opportunity. It's a lot of the suburbs like Round Rock and Cedar Park. They're, they're, they're great areas for families and whatnot. And Austin, Texas is a very popular city for many reasons, the music scene, so on, right? But there's also this culture, I believe, uh, in that market in particular, where I just feels like sellers are want more than what their house is really worth. Even, even at the height of the market, and even now when things are are dipping in those markets and more people are looking to leave Austin than move in. I just read an article uh, where more people are looking to leave Austin than move in. And I'll be honest, I'm from the area. I've never really understood the hype around Austin. I'm a huge Texas Longhorn fan. I grew up in Goldthwait, Texas, which is not far from, from Austin. That was one of the major cities that we would drive to. Never understood the hype, right? But I think that goes back to a lot of this is uh, markets are driven by emotions because they're driven by people, right? And so when we um, look at the economy, when we look at job reports, when we look at um, any metric in the world, there are human beings involved and human beings have feelings and wants and needs. The problem is when you're working with home sellers is they don't really care what anyone else thinks. Most of them, there's a lot of them that are great. I've worked with a lot of clients that are great, that are realistic and we sell their home and it's awesome and it goes well. The reality is it shouldn't take six months, three months to sell a house. Um, if you wanted to, then theoretically every house could be listed and sold within a few weeks. I know a lot of you are like, what? Yeah, so doesn't mean that doesn't mean I think you should do that, right? Because there are a lot of people that probably shouldn't sell their home, right? So because if everybody if everybody started shopping prices, then there's also an effect from that. And I don't necessarily know what the broader effect that would be. I'm sure I could come up with a response. But the reality is home sellers typically want too much for their home. I don't care where it is, right? Um, why? Why is this? Why do they? Why? Why is that the case? Well, um, I think a lot of it comes down to their reasonings for selling. So, what is the reason this person is selling their home, right? So, I'm working with a client right now who is selling their home in Kansas, right? And they're moving to the clean area, um, which is a uh, you know close to the military base. This is a military family. He's a sergeant he has a reason for selling. He has a fundamental reason for selling. He's to sell his house, use the money to buy another house here, right? So therefore he's willing to sell his house at a, um, he's not selling at a bargain. He's, not, he's just willing to sell his house for market value, for what it will go for. Market value isn't the market value of three months ago. It isn't the market value of three weeks ago. It's the market value of today because every day the market's changing because new buyers are coming in or going out, people are maybe renting instead of buying, the market's changing every day. So we have to keep that in mind. 
Nonetheless, he had a reason for selling. I think a lot of sellers don't have a reason for selling, a real reason for selling, right? So think of, uh, you know, it's kind of like those listings. I don't know if they're a thing anymore, but the make me move listings where the person would list their house at a price that basically was unrealistic, but hey, if you're willing to make me move, pay my price. And that's how I think a lot of sellers are now when they list their homes. It's just not really a realistic price. And it's because they always have to drop their price and the realtors don't care because they just want the listing. So the, the, the realtors know that if they just take the listing and I'll cover this in detail in other videos, the realtors know, well, if I just get the listing, that's all that really matters because if we got to lower the price later, we will. I'm not saying they're necessarily thinking about this in the moment, but they're prioritizing getting the listing over necessarily listing it where they think it would sell. Now, there's also this belief, I think, in real estate where, oh, well, we'll just list it really high and then we can always come down. And yeah, that may be true, but in markets like Austin, Texas, where you're seeing month after month inventory going up because the previous batch of homes are not selling, which is like a snowball effect, right? Because if you have, in 30 days, if a thousand houses are listed, right? 30 days from then, if there's another 30, if there's another thousand houses that are listed, but the previous thousand houses, if only, you know, 300, 500 of them sold, then it's going to keep compounding. A lot of listing agreements are for six months, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that a seller won't have their house listed for a year or even a year and a half, right? Or maybe they take it down early for three months, but I would say on average, most people would be willing to have their house listed depending on the reason for selling, you know, four, five, six months, right? Okay, so that affects prices, okay? So this is a, part of this video is tips on what you should do as a home seller. The, the first thing you should do is be realistic and hire a common sense realtor that understands leverage and negotiating and will be real enough with you to explain the comps to you and list your house at a reasonable price, the, i.e. the market value, right? So, in a nutshell, working with home sellers this day and age is difficult because the majority of them are very unrealistic. It's annoying. I mean, all you have to do is look at the comps, look at the real-time data, and make a decision. But people don't do that. They don't do that. They just look at, oh, well, Sally's house sold for this much per square foot, even though hers is nicer, newer, big, whatever. But th well, then mine could, we're right next to each other. Yeah, sorry, honey, it's not how it works. It's just not how it works. And what's crazy is I can't be the only one. There's probably a lot of you watching this are thinking, duh. But the problem is a lot of these sellers, for whatever reason, just don't have common sense. I mean, no offense, but they just don't have common sense. Like you don't have to have a, a master's in business administration to understand the real estate market or just selling your home. You know, it's not, it's not that hard. So anyways, this is why we have realtors because of, because people are so, I don't even know what, I, I think it's called the endowment effect, you know, you know, fact check me, uh, you know, if I'm wrong in the comments, but where some, when somebody owns something, they automatically perceive it as more valuable in their head. They can say that it's not, they can convince themselves, but really they have this core belief that it's just more valuable because it's theirs, right? Because it's personal to them. Anyways, guys, I'll let you go. That's the gist of the video. I'll be making more. Please like, comment, and subscribe. See you.